Yo guys, this game here is against Zack, and I thought I should upload it because it ends up being a crazy 2v8 of me and Yumi against the world. But we go first strike because the Zack is someone we can't really kill, we can't really trade. Even if we go Conqueror or Electrocute, the kill pressure is low, and he wins the trades as well in the short trades whenever he hits his E, which is pretty easy for him to do if I am melee range. Also, I go this little haste rune because with first strike, you don't really have much pressure anyways. So I thought it's pretty good and it ended up being decent. I also go Axiom, Hubris, Grudge, Profane, and then Ed Death's Dance, which is actually very useful against AD Threat in the mid to late game. And maybe even earlier on, if you have Conqueror, I feel that this item has some like potential to be pretty decent. But yeah, let's see how this game goes. So I managed to get control over the bush on the right side, level 1, which means I can go for a ward on their wraiths at 120. And you want to do it around 120 to 125, because that's when their support is less likely to be in the bush, because they prefer to be in their lane, level 1, to hit the wave. Um, so the whole thing about that is avoiding their mid laner and support as you push the ward in. And hopefully their jungler isn't there to see you. If the jungler's at the wraiths, make sure you just run away and you don't ward. Instead, ward the river where that pink ward is, or maybe a bit closer to the bush on the minimap right now. Um, but yeah, against Zack right here, make sure you use the Q at the last second on the first three minions. Don't push against him because he wins the trades. And also be very, very careful going melee range when he has E. Uh, right now he has W. But if he has E, then it's very hard to dodge his E with your W if you're very close to him. Uh, it just takes extra reaction time because you can just press EE. -E right onto you and he jumps a tiny bit onto you so that's the main thing don't be melee range and don't push the wave i would say and just farm up we have first strike so it's very very nice we can just chill this wave is pushing towards me but the third wave is coming in so we're going to want to shave it a bit as we hit some minions q auto he wards which is fine so when they go to ward, try to hit some minions a little bit like I did there because I was able to thin the wave. So I did punish his movement a little bit, which is important to do. Because if you don't hit the wave when they walk away to thin it a bit, then he's going to get a bigger wave. So if the third wave comes in like that, just start hitting it a bit. You know, if the wave is too big and you feel like it's going to build up too much, make sure you always take advantage of those small little pockets to get a couple auto attacks and meet a Q and E just to make it a bit, you know, a bit smaller of a wave. And then when Zack uses E, you can try to juke it by walking back forwards. I mean, I kind of did it there, but he just trolled, to be honest. So you can like run away and then run back forwards. But usually as Zed, you'll be able to ult him if he E's in, or you can also use your W. So it's not too big of a deal. The main thing is you want to make sure you're you don't stay in melee range. Uh, I think I make a mistake here. So I just popped the first strike and then I have to flash away. Because <laughs> Zack Volibear is much stronger than Zed Vi at level 3-4. So it was very, very bad by me. We need our level sixes and honestly like one item, I think. And we will start winning against those champs. But either way, we have no flash, which is kind of fine. I'm going to greed for my level or I'm going to greed for my 875 gold. I'm very, very lucky this spell doesn't hit me because I might have actually died. Um, be very careful of the Zack arm spell and make sure you don't go melee range against his E because he can easily hit it. And those are the two main things. Of course, we have 875 gold, and the goal is to always get seven, uh, 650 gold for pickaxe, longsword, or 700 if you're going Eclipse, so you can get double longsword, or 875. So we get 875 gold, we TP back, and Zack has Ignite, which means we have some advantage. We can probably punish him for going Ignite, um, and just keep him in lane. I kind of know he's going to roam, and even if he doesn't, I can push, and he's going to miss a wave. So a lot of Zacks tend to go Ignite. Um, they do sometimes go TP, but either way, we use our TP this game. And yeah, we just farm up. And that's basically the first few minutes against Zack. The main things to do is to make sure that you don't stay melee range in the lane because you can jump like that, that little E there. Imagine that E but just in the mid lane, like when there's minions and you're just trying to farm or like you're level 3. Um, that E is pretty impossible to dodge if you're closer to him. So we got his passive here, which is quite nice. But yeah, we dodge his E, that's the main thing, by just literally being further away so you can use your W to react when he uses his E. And also just stay out of range of his W, which is easy to do because you just stay back. So the main spell is also his grab, and you can use the minions to cover you from, them, from those. So uh, yeah, that's basically the first few minutes against the Zac. 
as we are kind of losing the game and everyone is getting wrecked. So we ended up swapping to top lane as my Vladimir got dove and I had to soak a lot of minions and I pushed out a few more waves as well. So we get level 7 off this grub. And now I'm thinking about what to do. We have the first strike item from Tonic which is the nice little damage and always save that for a fight. I don't really use it too ideally because we didn't really need it as you'll see. The volley bear comes out uh, around the corner because he sees his Zac going in which gave him some confidence. So we just ult and then I use my potion which is the red pot thing and I did not need to but it would have been better to save it for a more rainy day. You can always save that potion until whenever you want really and it can help you a lot in the skirmishes. But either way the Vladimir dies and we killed Volibear which is good enough. We're slowly scaling. So I push mid and I end up going top where Vladimir is getting dove by level 8 Gangplank and he's level 5. Yumi obviously rage quit bot lane and he's just standing top. Luckily he went into Vladimir to heal him a bit. As I ult onto Gangplank I make sure to flash away from the Zac shadow because I don't want to get hit by any of the CC. Then we wait for Zac to just come around to me while I have my shadow to jump on the Volibear. And then he jumps in to the minions which is quite troll because Vi is coming through and we can just run them, run this guy down because he doesn't have his ult anymore. So we have 4 out of 4 of my team's kills. So I recall I have Axiom, Dirk, Double Longsword, very very fed for being on the losing team. And I'm waiting to see an opportunity to go bot lane. I teleport thinking I'll go on Ezreal but then Volibear comes and I'm pinging Vi to come as well and help us. I know Vi is coming so I just go straight in. Make sure that Ezreal is dead, or he's about to die, and I use all of the rest of my damage on the Volibear. So we get the Ezreal shut down and the Volibear kill. We're getting a bunch of gold, so we have all the kills, and yeah, can win. So when you guys are on the losing team and you have a bounty, and you find an opportunity to give it over to the enemy support, then this is something you can do. I walk up, I auto E, I take tower aggro on purpose, fully knowing that I want to die to Nautilus. Luckily I get his flash for free, which is a cherry on top. But the whole logic is that if someone else gets my bounty, the game will be harder to win, so we give it to Nautilus instead. I see Ezra walking up and kind of greeting for platings and the next wave. And the combo I want to use is just WQW ult. It doesn't matter if the first Q hits, although it would be ideal. I'm going for the second Q with another W. So we walk up, we get the E, and then we wait, and we WQW, and we take our ult shadow and get a free kill. We end up finding the Volley Bear on our red buff, and I'm able to just combo him straight away. I tried to go for red, but then I failed. I know I need to follow him with ult, so we wait for his ult animation, and then we Q and we use auto ease, knowing that he's going to die to my passive auto attack, because I'm quite fed. And now that I have the hubris stacks, I'm thinking about whether I go for this gangplank, and I see the Vladimir ult right there at the end, knowing that my WQW will probably kill him if I can reach, with the first strike, and all of that. So we do that, and we kill him, and get another 310 gold. Now the dragon's up, I want to fight because I have hubris, axiom, and last whisper, I'm very very strong, I have 9 out of 9 of the kills. So I want my team to go in first as kind of like meat shield and stuff. And that's exactly what happens as Vi goes in and he tanks the Nautilus hook and everything. I still end up getting CC'd a bunch but I killed the Ezreal and I have a way to escape with my W's and my flash. Unfortunately one of my Q's didn't hit on the Zac I think which might have saved my jungler a bit longer. But we flash E and then Nautilus dies to Yumi and we take the W to get away. And then I realized that my ult is already coming back up because I have Axiom and I'm thinking about how to enter. We see the ward, um, but then we just walk up. Volibear is thinking that I don't have ult. And I just WW in, I ult, and then I Q, auto E, kill him again with a passive auto attack. And then we're able to get the dragon as well, which is an objective bounty. Um, so, yeah, we got a bunch of gold. At least I'm not the one with uh, all the kills anymore, but we're still pretty fed. So as I'm leaving base right now, I'm thinking about where to go. I know that our top tier 2 is about to die, and Gangplank is moving forwards. I can see him posturing aggressively on the minimap as he walked into our bush for our Krux. So I know he's pushing for sure, or it's very likely that he's not just recalling. And then I sweep to see that he's on those, so I can W straight onto him, take the W, take the barrel, ult onto him, knowing that I can just Q him, and I can ignore the barrel because the Qs are lined up. Um, so the importance of this is actually quite a lot, because we stop him from getting the tier 2, which would give him another 700 gold, and just do your best to defend the tier 2 towers even when you're behind. Especially if you're fed and you feel like you can do that. It's a good way to come back into the game because a lot of people like to greed for the tier 2. Which would give them 700 gold. Now I'm leaving base again and they end up diving mid. I want to show you guys something about target selection right here. So Zach goes in, he uses flash and everything on my team. But Ezreal is in so I'm thinking to go for Ezreal. 
But then I realized that it's bad uh, because the Volley Bear could stun me, Nautilus could stun me, and I could die. So it's good to just turn around and go on Zack. It's kind of a blessing that the Gangplank ult slowed me because I might have actually gone in, which would have been kind of greedy. And it's best to not be greedy in that kind of state where the Zack is flashing in very deep onto us. We don't need to do the same. It's good to just kill the Zack first because his team had to overextend way too much to help him. Now we're approaching the enemy tier 2, so when you're aggressing on the tower instead of defending, you want to just look for vision, like that plant is very nice to get because then I can see if people are coming, which they aren't, and then look to get for a kill, or look to go for a kill. And then right here, when we auto E, we want to make sure we use our E right before our auto attack comes out at the end, so that we can get the auto attack to be a passive auto attack, and yeah, that's pretty good. We get the tower, actually no, we don't. We see an Autolus and we W away. And then we just keep running away, knowing that I can maybe go bot with TP and Volibear is top as well. So we just want to play it nice and slow and patiently. I can use my W just to get some gold with first strike on the Volibear. I know that my team is probably going to beat the Zac, so I wait. And then I look. Just wait patiently. We can walk up still because we have a Yumi with us, which is really nice. So there's about three people top if we include the Gangplank that I killed. And so I'm thinking, okay, we can go for mid lane. I can kill this Ezreal. I see that we killed Zack Bot, which is great. My ult is coming back up. So I just go straight in. Use our W. Know that I don't need to ult, which is fine. Even if Kaiser dies, my ult wouldn't save him because I would um, have a little delay on it. And I don't want to flash just to save my Kaiser because he's, you know, not really strong. And yeah, we just play like this with the Yumi. We hit the tower, knowing that my Vi is close by, so we can probably fight this. Ult onto the Nautilus ult, so I don't get knocked up. And use my W backwards as well. And I use my W back again. And then we Q this guy. Uh, we can't kill him, which is fine. We got the Volibear kill. We got a bunch of gold. We have Hubris stacks. We just want to keep farming and keep trying to snowball with the Yumi on us. It's very nice and very easy to just farm and do our best to survive as we carry this game. So now my team is trying to fight the dragon and I'm kind of failing to get a good angle on the fight. I know that Zack is probably just going to zone me, which is very unfortunate. But I'm thinking to just walk up anyways, use a W, let Zack use his CC while his team is away. And then take the W, ult onto the gangplank, and auto E to get another W. It's very important that I let my W linger so that I can get another one just to get away and save my flash. But these kind of bold plays are a bit easier to do when you have a Yumi because Zack won't like insta one shot me with his ult. <laughs> uh, if I didn't have Yumi, maybe he would. Um, but yeah, we take two towers, we get the dragon and we're kind of coming back into this game. We're up in kills now, which is great. And yeah. So right here, I see my top wave is pushing into their tier two. And instead of pushing those lost few minions, I want to make sure that I'm in fog because someone might come out and I could maybe kill them. So I just wait for someone to come to the wave. Gangplank does, as soon as he uses his Q, we just jump in, WW, ult onto him, he has literally nothing, no passive auto attack, no Q, and uh, we just kill him straight away, we take the minions, get a bunch more gold, and we can buy Death Stance on Recall, which is amazing, because it means we very, very likely won't die. So now, we're fighting in the river, because they walk up, a wave mid is kind of bad, so it's not ideal, and I also don't have my ult, so I just use my W, and I run straight away as soon as Nautilus ults me, Wait for the Zac E as well, I don't want that to hit me either. And when I have my ult up, I just go straight in. I ult onto Zac so I can W onto the Volibear to kill him. And then we want to play it really slow because the Gangplank is TPing in. I don't want to underestimate his damage. I see that everyone is running away, so it's fine that Zac jumps on us because we can just kill him. He's just inting. Vladimir was able to kill Ezreal, which is amazing. And we can just kill the passive, which is very important. And then right here, I realize my ult is coming back up, so I want to keep going and try to kill them. Otherwise, I want to just go for the blue buff. So he flashes, and I'm thinking, okay, it's good. As soon as they flash, be very, very patient and let them get away, because in the mid to late game, when you're the one who has to carry, you can't go for too many greedy plays, and you want to make sure that you always survive. That is the most, most important thing. And right here, we go for Baron, and I think we get it. So if I forward it a bunch, we take the Baron, and we recall. So when you're sieging in the mid game, what you want to look at is the tier 2 towers um, before anything else. So instead of going mid for the Nexus tower, we want to make sure we get the tier 2 tower just to give us more gold and more free reign on the map. But I go for this really greedy play, just w onto Ezreal. Uh, I do auto E profane, but he lives with 1 HP, which is kind of sad. But then I could tank everything with the Yumi and the Death Stance, 
They're using all their spells and doing zero, so a full tank and full damage Z at the same time with the Yumi. We literally have 100% HP after that fight. Um, so we just go straight in. I flash on the Zac, you know, just comboing him out. He's dead and we push to end the game, I think. Although I get one more kill on the Ezreal. As we're taking the towers, I walk up and I W ult the Ezreal. And then we take the W obviously as we combo and then we use QE and he dies and we end the game. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. In